Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Alhamdulillah, wassalam Allah, wa rasulallah. Welcome to another session of Sunnah Followers Tawhi class. And when I say this is our Tawhi class, what does that mean? What type of class is this? Who can one answer that? Allah. One Allah. Okay, so what type, what are we learning here? What type of class is it? Belief. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a belief class. So... Yeah, exactly. It's an Akita class. Good job. When I told he means the oneness of Allah. So this is the class in which I am teaching the oneness of Allah. And this is a form of Akita or a form of belief. This is one of the aspects of believing in Allah. And it's very important. And we've been speaking about what the Muslims, what the correct Muslim belief system is what the correct Muslim's belief system entails. And let me put the quiz up on the screen because we spoke yesterday as to what the correct belief system of the Muslim entails. Let's see how well you guys can remember what it entails. Let's look at question number one, true or false. If a Muslim doesn't pray, wait a minute. If a Muslim doesn't pray, he is an unbeliever. Is that statement true or false? If a Muslim does not pray, he is an unbeliever. Is that statement false. true or false? False. false? false. Okay, does anybody think it's true? Does anyone think it's true? Mashallah, this is false. Okay, so what is the person who doesn't pray? The Muslim who doesn't pray, what is he? Sinner. Exactly. He or she is a sinner. Is there any way a Muslim can be a person that doesn't pray and an unbeliever? And if so, how? How can such a person be an unbeliever? By denouncing his religion, denouncing Islam. No. If a Muslim doesn't yeah. pray, he or she is a sinner. What would make yeah. that person an unbeliever? Anyone? If he denies, he doesn't have to pray. Exactly. Right. Only oh, if he or she denied. Only yeah. if he or she denies what? Denies that prayer, like Pfizer said, is an obligation, not deny Islam. Okay. To deny that praying is an obligation. That is what makes, that would make a person in this situation an unbeliever. So we can't go around doing like a lot of the fanatical Muslims today do. They go around calling other Muslims kafir because they don't pray. No, you can't call that person a kafir. Yes, that person's a sinner, but unless that person denies that praying is an obligation, unless that person denies that he or she has to pray, they are not a kafir. They're just a sinful Muslim. Maybe nobody taught them the correct belief system. Maybe they don't know that praying is an obligation. Maybe they don't know how to pray. Maybe they don't know the importance of prayer. So we can't refer to these people as being kafirs. Only if the person denies that they have to do it, would they be a, a kafir. And even then, it's not for you or me to call them that. Does everyone understand that? So don't be one of those Muslims going around calling other Muslims kafirs because they don't pray. All right, let's look at question number two. Question number two. Halima does not believe covering the body is wrong and she considers it oppression against women. 
How does this belief impact her faith? Who can explain it? Halima does not believe that covering the body, that not covering the body is wrong. And she considers it oppression against women to cover her body. How does this belief that she has impact her faith? Anyone? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum um, salam. The fact that Halima believes that wearing the hijab is wrong and considers it to be oppressive against women, um, her belief system is invalid. Allah clearly tells us in the Quran that women are obligated to wear the hijab and to deny that Allah to deny what Allah says um, makes her an unbeliever. Okay, now you guys see why Faiz is my best student. You see how she answered. She explained it and she gave her evidence. That's how I want all of you to answer. You know, give the answer, explain why your answer is what it is and give the proof, the clear evidence to support it. Exactly. Halima, as she said, the fact, uh-oh, uh-oh, I mean, it's hard for me to type and talk. The fact that she does not believe uncovering to be wrong and the fact that she believes covering is oppressive this invalidates her belief in a law because Allah clearly states for the Muslim women to cover their bodies when they leave the home to go public. Does everybody understand that? So again, whenever it all boils down to the same Reality, whenever we deny something is an obligation that Allah has clearly told us is an obligation, that invalidates our belief in him. We spoke about how the correct belief system of the Muslim entails believing all the things that Allah commands us to do and also to believe in all his rules, his guidelines, his regulations, and to believe in everything that he says is good and clean is good and clean, and everything he says is bad and dirty is bad and dirty. Does everybody understand that? So be careful making your statements. I had to tell uh, my granddaughter, don't ever give your opinion on an issue when it comes to Islam. If a law says something, if the prophet says something is so, then that's it. What you think about it, your opinion of it, your view, your feelings about it don't matter. You're unimportant. And if you think that it's oppressing you, it will make you a denizen of the hellfire, an ally of shaitan instead of an ally of a law. Okay, good job. Let's look at the next question. Question number three, true or false? A person can talk to his or her dead relative. False. False. Anybody else? Anybody think it's true that it's so that it's true that we can talk to our dead? My grandmother died. Can I talk? Can I call make do a talking to her? Can I talk to my dead grandmother? No. Can I talk to to my dead father? No. Any okay? Anybody think it's true? Everybody saying it's false. Where anybody got any evidence or any reason as to why I can't? Why come I can't talk to my dead relative? Well, they come slime. Because the D is an albarat. They cannot hear or see you. The dead is in El Barzak. They are not a part of this world anymore. 
And it and uh, and a law. Go ahead. Whoever that was. And a law says she gave the evidence. The dead cannot hear nor see you. There it is. I don't care what some imam or some sheikh told you. Allah tells us clearly in the Quran, the dead cannot hear nor see you. That's one verse. Then in another verse, he says, you cannot make the dead hear nor see you, nor can you make the deaf ears listen to you. Okay, so Allah is clear. He tells us these things. Does everybody understand? So I don't care what some famous American uh, man who's from a foreign country told you. You know, he cannot make a ruling to contradict what Allah says. And for you to believe what he says over what Allah clearly says and makes your belief in Allah questionable. Good job, Gracie. Okay, what about question number three? There is nothing wrong with supplicating to a deceased saint as long as you know that he or she is not a law and cannot benefit you. Is that statement true or false? There is nothing wrong with supplicating to a deceased saint as long as you know that that person is not a law and that that person cannot harm nor benefit you. What do you guys think about that? That would be false. Why? And give me more information and dial in. And off because we can't seek blessings from the dead. This is a form of shirk. And same as before in the Quran, it talks about we can't talk to the dead. You know, Allah said they can't see or hear us. Exactly. And I want you American Muslims to understand that because a lot of these American men from foreign countries who are famous, who you have made famous scholars of today are now saying that you can do this. They're on video saying that, that there's nothing wrong with supplicating to a, a saint or a good person or a deceased person as, and talking to them as long as you know that the person is not a law and that that person can't harm or benefit you. First of all, law tells you they can't hear you. So what the heck are you talking? Who are you talking to? Allah tells you they no longer part of this world. The prophet said the dead is no longer a part of this world. They are dealing with their own things. They're in El Barzakh, as Sister Gracie said, dealing with their own things. They're not even concerned with you. They're not even concerned with this world. So who the heck are you talking to? Hello. So be careful of these famous men here in America who y'all think are scholars. Keep telling y'all they ain't got none here. Okay, so this is false. As Sister Latifah said, this is a form of associating partners with a law. First of all, guys, a law says, call upon me alone. That's a verse of the Quran. Allah tells us to call upon only him. He tells us clearly, do not call upon anyone else because they can't hear you. The prophet Muhammad has told us in many, many, many authentic hadiths. You cannot direct your supplications to anyone other than Allah. We can't even supplicate to the prophet Muhammad. If I cannot supplicate to the prophet Muhammad, then what, who, what makes you think I can supplicate to some person I think is a saint? A stuck for love. Again, guys, all of this stuff invalidates, you know, it can invalidate our belief in Allah. Okay, let's look at question number four. Ahmed. Ahmed believes that cutting the hand of a thief is unjust. So as ruler of his country, he replaces this with imprisonment because to him, this is much better. How does this impact his Akita? 
Or in other words, how does this impact his belief system? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? His belief system is uh, off because they do cut the hands of a thief because in Hadith, that's what they did. There's Hadith where they cut the hands off the thief. They cut his right hand off. If he keeps on stealing, they cut off the opposite okay, side. Okay, but we didn't say that it's not done. The question is, listen to the statement. Ahmed believes that cutting the hand of a thief is unjust. He's not denying that people did it. He's, oh. He listened to the question. Ahmed believes that cutting the hand of a thief is unjust. So as ruler of his country, he replaces this with imprisonment because to him, imprisonment is better. How does this impact his belief system? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, his belief system is not right. This is in fact like innovation because he's introducing something into the religion that is not permissible. And that the prophet said, he who does an act which we have not commanded will have it rejected by Allah. Okay, she said he's innovating for one because Islam calls for the cutting of the hand to replace this law with a different one is innovation, okay? And the prophet said, whoever introduces something into our religion it will be rejected okay that's one answer any other answers anybody else with a different answer also because he uh he feels he feels like his rule his ruling is better than uh what allah made lawful so what Finish it up. You said because he feels let his ruling is better than the prophet. What? No, his his ruling is better than uh, what Allah made a, a lawful. He feels like his 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 better than um, his better than. Uh, okay, so is that innovation? To think that my rule is better than a law's rule. Is that innovation? Or is that something else? That's something else. What is it? That's associating partners with that. So uh, innovation, no, that's not association. That's what? Well, what is it? Guys, to think that my rules are better and more just than a law's, what is that? Can anybody answer that? If I think that my rule, Laylee, is better than a law's, what is that? This is a belief system. Okay, what is it? What does it do to my belief system? It validates. Exactly. It. Gracie got it right over all of y'all again. Whenever we think that somebody's laws are better than a law's, that's not innovation. That is disbelief. That means you don't believe in a law. Remember, we have to believe that only a law knows what's best. Mm -hmm. If I think that someone other than a law knows what's best for us, if I think that something about a law is unjust, then I have just disbelieved in him. You cannot say you believe in a law, but you don't believe that he is the best. If you think that some that his laws are not good, that he made a mistake, then that means you have just disbelieved in him. So this is not innovation. Now this has fallen into disbelief. Good job, Gracie. Everybody understand that? To believe 
that Allah's laws are not the best or not just means you have disbelieved in him. And to disbelieve in Allah puts you, I mean, puts your Akita in jeopardy. Does everybody understand that? Okay. In order for your Akita or in order for your belief system to be correct, you must believe that every law a law made was for our betterment. That there is no one who can out top his laws. You cannot harbor in your heart any feelings that Allah was being oppressive or unjust. There's a lot of Muslims I remember back in the early 2000s when Nigeria, uh, the country of Nigeria, the Muslims were stoning women for adultery and stoning men for adultery. I'll never forget a lot of Muslims had joined my website. That's back when I had the old, old website, the webinar, voice chat, voice chat. They were joining, uh, demanding that I speak about it. And this is wrong. It's a, one woman came and she had typed up a petition that she wanted the Muslims here in America to sign so that the women and men in Nigeria could stop being stoned to death. They even had pictures of the stonings, you know, to sympathize, to gain sympathy. And I remember I became an evil woman. They considered me a witch then too, because I said, I'm sorry, are you out your mind? That's the law of Allah. I am not gonna sign a petition saying that Allah's laws are unjust and inhumane. Allah says in the Quran that the punishment for adultery is death through stoning. So you're asking me to sit here as a dyer and want and claim to teach tall he, but just tell the people that Allah is unjust in his laws. I remember I told them people, I can't do that. And I'm not taking no parts of that. It is not inhumane. For you to think that Allah's laws are inhumane, that questions your belief in him. And I remember back then, that's when they would make websites to slander you. I remember those Muslims left here and made another website slandering Layla Nasheba. What an innovator, what a deviator, oh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I'm sorry, guys, I don't care what your thoughts are about stoning to death. You better put your thoughts in accordance to Allah's uh, will because that's the punishment. That's the punishment. Now, if the people in your country, I remember telling these women, if the men in your country are not following the guidelines, because Allah made it hard. He said, whenever you accuse a person of adultery, you have to have four witnesses who actually saw the person in the act. Now I told these women, now if the men in your country are just stoning to death women without proof, then that's a different matter. But if you're asking me to support you against the law's laws, I'm sorry, that ain't working. Because stoning to death is good and clean because the law said so but they they have to follow the guidelines of having four men four male witnesses who can testify and put the wrath of Allah on them if they are lying that they saw this person engaging in the act doing it now if they don't exercise that part then that's a different issue but if they're doing it the way Allah said, executing the law the way Allah said, then I'm sorry, I support Allah's laws. 
Everybody understand that. But it has to be done the way. Remember, in order for our, our deeds to be accepted, they must be done the way a law legislated. A law says you cannot stone a person for adultery unless that person has been proven to be guilty. And how are they proven to be guilty? You have to bring four male witnesses who will swear that what they say is true and put the curse of a law on them if they're lying, that they saw this person in the bed doing it. See how just the law is? Do you know how hard it is to catch a person in the act and then leave and go get three more people to come join you and see the act? See how a law knows us. Oh, Lord is more merciful, even when it comes to the punishment of adultery. A law shows his mercy because a law knows it is hard for me to see and then go and get found four more people who are men to come see too. If I'm going to get women, I got to bring eight women. I can't bring four women. I got to bring eight women. Hello. See how merciful my Lord is. Allah don't make it that easy. His laws are his laws. Does everybody understand that? And I remember I caught a lot of slander about that from those Muslims. Okay. All right. Let's look at the uh, question uh, again. So uh, again, to believe that Allah's laws are not the best or not, just means you have disbelieved in him and to disbelieve in Allah puts your aqidah in jeopardy. And also, again, whenever we introduce any other laws, Allah gave the law for uh, adultery. He gave the punishment for adultery. We can't introduce our own stuff in that. Okay. Okay. Good job. Let's look at question number five, the night journey. The night journey of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a dream. He did not really travel. Is that statement true or false? True. Okay. Yeah. Gracie says it's true. Anybody else? Y'all think it's true? The night journey of the prophet was a dream. He did not really travel. Oh, sorry. False. 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 My bad. Okay. False. Anything else to say about it? It actually happened. It was a miracle that I law performed. Okay. Anything else y'all need to bring back about? Uh, Abu Barker believed that he had the night journey and he demanded for everybody else to do the same. Exactly. This is false. This is false. The night journey actually happened and anyone who denies that it happened has invalidated their belief does everybody understand that because again part of the correct belief system of the muslim is we have to believe everything that Allah said, and we have to believe everything the Prophet Muhammad said too. Does everyone understand that? Our belief system entails believing not only everything Allah says, but also everything the prophet said too. Does everybody understand that? And believe it or not, there are Muslims today who still uh, want to say that the prophet's night journey was a dream. Well, these Muslims have some Aqidah issues. They claim to have love for the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they want to deny his night journey. Okay. All right. Let's look at the last question. Question number Seven, Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation of, oh, oh no, number six, I'm sorry. Question number six, Jamil denies that the bad things that happen in this world are the work of Allah. 
How does this impact his Akita? What y'all think about this, this situation? Jamil denies, he does not believe that the bad things that happen in this world are from Allah. What impact does this have on his belief system, if any? And there's a lot of Muslims out there who do not believe, like for example, Corona. When I was teaching about uh, Corona, I told you guys, Corona virus came from Allah. The coronavirus is here because Allah willed it. And a lot of Muslims argued me about that. They attacked me about that on Facebook, saying, how dare I say something like that? Allah didn't send the corona. Allah doesn't send bad things to us. Is that correct? What do you guys think? Anyone? Assalamu alaikum. Um, I was going to say that Jamil's belief system is invalid. Um, as Muslims, it is an obligation for us to believe in the decree of Allah, both the good and the bad, that the good comes from Allah and the bad comes from Allah too, as a result of what we have brought upon ourselves. And any time and any time that we deny any component of faith, we are not true believers. Exactly. See how she answers. See how Pfizer will give the answer, yes or no? And then she'll explain why her answer is yes or no. And then she follows it up with the clear evidence, the clear verse that proves what she says to be saved. That's how I want everyone here to answer. That's also the way Meleon answers. That's also the way Sister Isra will answer. That's also the way Sister Aisha will answer. That's also the way Sister Norto will answer. I want you guys and Sister Yasmin, I want you guys to follow their way of answering. Everybody got that? Okay, so Jamil, the fact that he denies, first of all, as she said, Allah tells us clearly, whatever, oh, I cannot type, good befalls you is from Allah. And whatever bad befalls you is from Allah as a result of what you have brought upon yourselves. That verse is clear. That verse is clear. And as she said, belief in the decree of a law is one of the components of faith and to deny any of the components of faith will invalidate your belief system is there another hadith you guys got that proves that belief in, in the decree of Allah is a component of faith is there a hadith you guys can come up with that proves that belief because some people say well how do you know that's a that's a component of faith if there is there a proof that belief in the decree of Allah is one of the components of faith go ahead whoever Good job, Brother Emma, too. Good job, Sister Laley, too. Good job, Sister Sarah, too. They had those answers right, too. Come on, nobody can give me a hadith. Can somebody think of a hadith that proves that uh, belief in the decree of Allah is a component of faith? Every Muslim on this planet should be able to give me one. Because God knows there's about three that I can think of that you learn as a baby. Anyone? No one has a hadith. Is it the hadith of where the angel Jibril approaches the prophet and asks you please him, tell them, remind them of that hadith. I can't believe all these 21 students of mine forgot that, that 
famous, infamous Hadith. Go ahead, Pfizer. So the angel Jibril one day, um, he disguised himself as a beautiful person and he sat down by the prophet and the prof he asked the prophet, um, what is Islam? What is, what is Iman? What is faith? Um, and what is Ihsan? And when the prophet was asked, what is faith? Um, the prophet answered and he said, faith is to believe in Allah, his prophet, his angels, his books, um, his um, messengers, and in the last day the the decree of allah and then um the last is is that is that you gave them all you gave them okay. and then the decree of allah did i mention that one yeah you just did yeah uh -huh. exactly y'all forgot the hadith of jabril that we talk about in every class Subhanallah, the angel Jabril took on the appearance of a beautiful, handsome man dressed in white with beautiful black straight hair, hello, and came to the prophet and asked him, tell me about faith. Faith is to believe in Allah, to believe in his angels, his books, his prophets and messengers, to believe in the day of judgment, and to believe in the decree of Allah. Y'all forgot that hadith? So that hadith there is one hadith, there's many others, but that is a, a famous hadith that where that proves that believing in the Qadr or the decree of Allah is a component of faith. Let me just summarize by saying the angel, the hadith of Jabril is proof that belief in the Qadr of a law is a component of faith. So for those Muslims out there who were running around talking about, oh, Corona didn't come from a law. It came from America. Some American scientists ate some bats. That might be what started it, yeah. Remember guys, we are all puppets of a law. We are the puppets of a law. We are the puppets of a law that he can pull and twist however he wants. So yes, it probably did start from somebody eating a bat in a laboratory or whatever. Who cares? And it could have started here in America. The bottom line, it came from a law. The knowledge of it came from a law. The knowledge to do it came from a law. And how do diseases and viruses, who can remember that, Hadi? How do viruses, how does a law spread viruses through the earth? Can the anybody tell us? Man. Exactly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us in another authentic hadith that when a law decrees for a virus to hit the earth, he sends it. That's another hadith I was looking for. A law will, when a law wants a virus to hit the earth, he will send it and have the jinn spread it throughout the earth. So the viruses are spread it by the jinn. A law will cause the jinn to spread the viruses throughout the earth. So everything that happens to us on this world, good and bad, happens because a law willed it. Allah allowed that scientist to eat a bat and be able to develop the corona. It wouldn't have happened if Allah didn't will it to happen. Does everybody understand? And when Allah willed that scientist to do it, Allah then calls the jinn, cause we got jinn that fly, jinn that can run and at fast, at fast speeds. Allah calls them to carry it throughout the earth. So that's why Corona ain't going nowhere. By the way, this is one of the greater signs of the last hour too. Corona ain't going nowhere. So y'all better get them shots. You better get the shots. It ain't going nowhere. The prophet said it would happen. Many viruses, Corona, Corona 19, 20, 21, 22. We're gonna probably go through Corona 50,000 before the world comes to an end. 
to just keep taking the shots. Like the prophet said. All right, so, you know, we have to accept that this is to deny that the bad things that happen in the world happen because Allah wills them. This will invalidate your belief system. Everything good and bad happens because Allah allows it to. The good is a reward. The bad is a punishment for what we have done. Okay. Now, last question, question number seven. Allah says in the Quran, but no, by your Lord, they will never have faith until they make you, Muhammad, the judge in all their disputes and they find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and they accept your decisions with full submission. Who can give me the meaning? Who can break this verse down into plain English for us? Who can break this, the meaning of this verse down into plain English for us? Anyone? Anyone? Good job, Sarah. Good job, Sarah, on that last answer too. Okay. Who can give me the meaning of this verse of the Quran? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, I got to make it bigger. Wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, just, just um, break it down word by word. Read each word and explain it. That's how you do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I mean it. Okay, it, but, yeah, summarize, okay. But start with the beginning. Like say, okay. when Allah says... But no, by your Lord, they cannot have no faith until they make you judge. Explain it after that. You know, just start okay. at the beginning and explain as you go along. Go ahead. Okay. When Allah says, but no, but no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, Muhammad, the judge. People can't have no faith unless they make, Mah unless they make Muhammad, they judge. In all they disputes and all they in all, everything that they going. Wait a minute. You got it. Come on, can you own it? You getting there? I'm proud. <laughs> Judge and all uh, disputes between them. What does that mean? Yeah. Okay. In all of their disagreements, whatever going on between them, uh, they got to make the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing of Allah be the judge of all of that. And all what about they us? They going through. Okay. All of us. Okay. Okay. Good job. Okay, anybody uh, else want and finding themselves no resistance against his decisions? What does that mean? They don't that mean they don't they don't fight against it, they agree with it and know that it's true and accept okay. it. Okay, good and job. Submit to it. Good job, Fresno. See, that's how you that's how you explain. You look at the words, break them down like that. Good job. Anybody else want to go? Good job. I mean, anybody else want to try it? But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, Muhammad, judge in all their disputes. Now, some Muslims will say, well, Muhammad ain't living. So how can that relate to us today? Anybody else want to go for it? Break it down word for word, like Amina did. You can make it even more clearer than Amina did. Amina got it right, but it can be even in more grassroots. Give me some grassroots English. So the people walk away without no question or not about what they understand that the verse to be. Anyone, go ahead. Well, I'm going to try it. Uh, you know, Allah sent other prophets before. Uh, okay, you blew it right there. Allah didn't send But, I, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work you it out. To, I'm trying to teach you how to ponder the meaning of the Quran. You ponder the meaning of the Quran by reading it in your language, word for word, start at the beginning, like I had I, I mean to do. <clears throat> you don't pick up some part in your mind that they ain't got nothing to do with this verse. This verse don't mention nothing about no other prophet. Do it like Amina did. <clears throat> read what is right before. When y'all read the Quran, <clears throat> when you read a hadith, you read the words that are in front of you and break them down into the most simplest form of English you can. You don't sit there and read the word and replace it with other stuff. Allah says here, Anissa, 
but know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you Muhammad judge in all their disputes. That's the first part. So you don't read that and say, well, Allah sent many prophets. No, you go back to the beginning and you say, when Allah says they can have no faith, until they make you judge in all disputes, this means. That's how you answer, Anissa. You don't sit here and dwaddle off into La La Land. Try it again, Anissa. Try it again. To, uh, Amina has already answered. No, she right. gave her version. But, but I don't have another version. Though. Try it, Anissa. You can this is up it. your alley. You can break this down if you read what's in front of you and break it down. You got the gift of gab. You can break it down in grassroots. Oh, what does Allah mean Anita, when he says you can have no faith until they make, how does that remember? How does, okay, let me do it, make it easier for you. I want you to relate this verse to us today, Anissa. When Allah says you can have no faith until you make Muhammad judge in all your disputes, how can that relate to a person today? How can a person make Muhammad their judge today? You can't think of an answer. I'm getting ready to go off. I can't, I can't do it that way. You can't. Okay. Well, how, anybody yeah. else? Somebody help Anissa. Can I try? Go ahead. Listen to Pfizer, Anissa. Um, so the verse basically means you do not believe until we accept what the prophet said. And that means that um, if the prophet tells us something in the hadith, we accept it and we take it without a doubt, without question, without resistance. For example, if the, if the Prophet Sallallahu tells us and explains that all intoxicants are unlawful, then we accept that we accept it, we, we accept it and try not to make any excuses for taking the intoxicant. There you go. That's it. See how she broke it. And Anissa, this is your baby. You could have done that. That's it. She broke it down in plain English. How does it relate today? When Allah says, until you make the Muhammad, until they make you Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the way, when they make you Muhammad judge in all their disputes, this is talking about the hadiths. Until we accept everything that the prophet Muhammad said, Anissa, then, and not fight against what he says, to, to not take fatwas over what he says, to not make, let our feelings override what he says until we accept everything the prophet Muhammad told us and submit to it, we will never be a believer. That's all this verse is saying. Amina said it too, but in a different way. You could have broken down like Pfizer, Anissa, because you speak the same way Pfizer does. You're just making it hard. You get it now, Anissa? Yes, I'm doing all. And that, should, that was you, because you can explain stuff like this better than anybody. Everybody get it? Why well, come when it comes to reading comprehensions, Americans clam up? <laughs> if this was an open form, Anissa would have ran home with that. I can hear her now. Until you accept what the prophet say, you, she would have given you a million examples in a form. You can't sit there and say that, you know, you believe in a law, but you're still married to a Kafir man. Anissa would have oh, took well. you there. Anissa would have took you there. You can't say that you believe in a law, you know, but you say, but I'm not going to accept the fact that the prophet said I can't use my left hand to eat. Anissa would have took you there. Okay, but when it comes to reading comprehension, we clam up. And I don't know why we do that. But thank you. Everybody gets it. And, and good job, Amina. I'm proud of you. You came out of your shell. <laughs> uh, hum duty law. But that's exactly and and nutshell until we accept everything the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the hadiths and not fight against what he has said and instead accept it 
without question, as Pfizer said, we will never be a true believer and never have the correct belief system. Y'all see that? Good job, Amina. Same thing Amina said, but, uh, but it's just more broken down so that y'all can understand it. Okay, so these things that we talked about today, this quiz that we had today, this entails the correct belief system of the Muslim. We have to believe in all the things Allah commanded us to believe in. That means his books, his prophets, his angels, the day of judgment, the day of Qadr, and everything he told us about these things. We have to accept all of Allah's laws, all of Allah's rules, all of Allah's guidelines and not fight them. You have to accept the fact that as a Muslim woman, you have to cover and I'm gonna tell you, I love it. I love looking the way I look. If I were to go out the house without a hijab on with just my hair on, I would just be another average looking woman. But the simple fact that I am dressed the way Allah commands me to, it distinguishes me. I don't look like no nun either. I look like Layla Nasheba, the queen of Sheba's descendant, which I am. I am a descendant of Bill Keys, and that's what I look like. Proud descendant of a believer, of a believer. Proud to be the descendant of another believer. Hello, not a hypocrite and not a Catholic. Okay. All right. Any questions about any of these answers? You guys did pretty good. Let me look on Facebook. Yasmin said it, this means that whenever we are dealing with others about Allah and the religion, we have to refer to what the prophet said or did and whatever the prophet tells us, we have to submit a good job. Y'all see how Yasmin answered. You should have been in here to take the mic, Yasmin. Yasmin said that verse means that whenever we are dealing with others about Allah and the religion, we have to refer to what the prophet said or did. And whatever the prophet tells us, we have to accept his decisions and submit to it without questioning it if we want to be people of faith. Good job, Yasmin, another one of my better students. Also, Brother Ahmad, it means you can't be a believer until you follow the prophet's teachings in terms of Islam. And you need to accept what he says with no doubt or question. Good job, Brother Ahmad is another one of my better students. Also, Sakina. When Allah says we have no faith unless we believe in the things that Muhammad has left in his messages as revealed by Allah without arguing or resisting. The, exactly. Good job, Sakina. You see, I used your picture yesterday, too. OK, so good job, guys. This is the correct belief system until we stop fighting Allah's commands, until we stop fighting Allah's obligations. We will never have the correct belief system. We have to submit. What is the meaning of Islam? Islam means total submission to the will of Allah. We have to totally submit ourselves to Allah's will without resistance. Total. That means I don't resist. I'm wearing hijab. I'm not going to resist it. I wear hijab because Allah wills for me to wear it. I look beautiful and regal because Allah loves beauty. And Allah wills that we be beautiful in our appearance. That's why Allah says, wear your beautiful garments outside and wear them to the mosque. If I can be beautiful going to the mosque, what the heck makes you think I can't be beautiful on YouTube? The mosque is its most sacred place for the Muslim. If Allah tells me to wear my beautiful garments to the mosque, how dare you ignorant, uh, hateful men tell a Muslim woman she can't wear her beautiful garments in her home while she's videoing on YouTube. You contradict yourselves when this is what that verse means. Whenever we put our own opinions in, our own conceptions in, that's when we destroy 
our belief system. Allah didn't make any mistakes. Allah is the most perfect. Man, we are not perfect. We make mistakes all the time. And we are prone to evil because of it. Hello. Goodbye. Any questions? Okay, we're going to stop right here for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go into the lecture. The lecture is very uh, powerful to, for tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to speak more about the correct belief system of the Muslim. But I had to quiz you today to make sure you understood what we discussed yesterday. So I'm going to close out here. Uh, make sure you guys, uh, I have been recording the quizzes. This will be on YouTube. It won't be on SoundCloud, but YouTube. So I will uh, put this up on YouTube like I did the other quizzes. Okay, because this stuff is important. You know, you, without the correct belief system, you are lost. Okay, all right. And also, let me remind everybody if you truly enjoy coming here to my classes, learning Islam and its truthfulness, please support us. Please go to www.sunafollowers.net, two N's, two L's, one H and click on make a donation because we don't get that many donations and it's just us, the regular, us 20 sisters who are supporting the website. But my gosh, guys, we need more help. We need more support. So please uh, uh, join, uh, go to the website and uh, the, web, the, the website and make a donation to support us. We are a nonprofit organization. All your donations go to pay for our servers, uh, the programs we use, and all of that other stuff. And I would like to put a, a, a Suna Followers conference together one day, but we uh, we never get donations like that. I don't, we got to get, I just wish we would get more so I could put a conference together for us. We can all meet up and have uh, myself and Sheikh Morsi and Dr. Jamali and, uh, and Brother Mukhtar and, and a couple of other uh, famous guests, you know, come and speak, you know, uh, for us. But I need more donations to do that. I could probably even get Khalid Yassin for y'all. Hello, I sure could. Mukhtar could. I could get Khalid Yassin. <laughs> but we need money for all that stuff. So please, guys, um, uh, try to support us. Okay, so I'm closing out here on uh, Facebook, uh, but we're live in the Zoom room. Feel free to join us in our uh, Zoom room. Uh, it's open. Subhanakallahumwabi hamdika ashadu anla ilaha ila anta stakfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.